Hi friends, good afternoon. Well, you people must be enjoying your quarantine period. With along with enjoyment, let's you know discuss the study part also. So today here I am in front of you and I'll be discussing the metabolism of the amino acids. Now, whenever we discuss about the metabolism of amino acids, we have to study it under two categories. Because the structure of amino acids, if we see, it is like this. This is the generalized structure. There are 20 standard amino acids which differ only at this position. So, if we see, whenever we are going to discuss the metabolism, you know metabolism is actually catabolism plus anabolism. So, here what happens is, Catabolism is associated with the carbon skeleton and with this nitrogen skeleton. And all of us know that this amino group which is present in every amino acid, it undergoes transamination, deamination leading to the formation of urea in the end. So the fate of nitrogen is, it is going to form urea in the end. Now what is the of this carbon. On the basis of carbon skeleton, we can divide amino acids into two groups. Glucogenic amino acids and ketogenic amino acids. See, glucogenic. Genic means formation. Formation of glucose will be the glucogenic amino acids. Ketogenic means which are forming some keto group. They will come under ketogenic. There are certain amino acids which can be both glucogenic as well as ketogenic. This we are going to take later. Now, today we are going to study the metabolism of carbon skeleton of amino acids. Now, again, when we have to discuss this carbon metabolism, one will be how it is degraded or degradation part and second segment will comprise of the specialized products which are synthesized by a particular amino acid. So this is how if we have to study the metabolism as per carbon skeleton as per nitrogen skeleton we divide the amino acids. Now today we are going to discuss the metabolism of Phenylalanine. We are going to take up the metabolism of individual amino acids. So, phenylalanine. Now we know phenylalanine. What are the important properties of phenylalanine? First is, it is a essential amino acid. Second is, Phenylalanine is both glucogenic as well as ketogenic. Now just now I told you that we are going to study the catabolism or metabolism under two subheadings. One is the catabolism. Once the function of this phenylalanine the amino acid is over, it is degraded to form certain byproducts also which are required by our body. And second segment is it is converted to form certain specialized products which are obviously required. So this phenylalanine first of all will be converted into tyrosine. If we look at the structure of phenylalanine and tyrosine, the only difference is regarding the hydroxyl group. So if we have to name the enzyme, the enzyme would be phenylalanine hydroxylase. Phenylalanine hydroxylase. Now this is a very important enzyme in a sense that it has so many other components. The major components of this are oxygen is converted into water. Molecular oxygen is oxidized to water which is accompanied by tetrahydropterin and tetrahydropterin which is accompanied by NADP and NADPH plus H. So this reaction is basically interlinked. So first reaction is 
phenyl alanine undergoes hydroxylation in the presence of enzyme phenyl alanine hydroxylase to form tyrosine in our body very very important product now what abhi now right now we are discussing what the catabolism ki how this phenyl alanine undergoes catabolism first degradative product is tyrosine this tyrosine will then undergo being an amino acid it will undergo transamination in the presence of enzyme tyrosine transaminase we all know transamination always requires tnp or vitamin b6 as the coenzyme so this tyrosine will be converted into para hydroxy phenyl pyruvate now once this para hydroxy phenyl pyruvate is produced it undergoes oxidative decarboxylation the enzyme here is para hydroxy phenyl pyruvate dioxygenase resulting into what homogenistic acid right then what happens is this homogenistic acid once it is produced then it will be converted into four methylyl acetoacetate methylyl acetoacetate by undergoing oxidation in the presence of enzyme homogenistic acid oxidase now i am not writing the complete enzymes because you know this is the major function and this is the substrate so you can very well name the enzymes suppose if this is the reaction the enzyme would be homogenistic acid oxidase if this is the reaction the enzyme is para hydroxy phenyl pyruvate dioxygenase similarly tyrosine transaminase now once this four methylyl acetoacetate is produced it will undergo isomerization forming four fumaryl acetoacetate once this fumaryl acetoacetate is produced it simply undergoes hydrolysis in the presence of enzyme for fumaryl acetoacetate hydrolase means there is breakage of this it splits up into fumaric acid and acetoacetate so this is what this is the catabolism of phenyl alanine which is an essential amino acid first reaction is formation of tyrosine by hydroxylation which requires molecular oxygen and dihydrobiopterin reductase enzyme second is tyrosine undergoes transamination forming para hydroxy phenyl pyruvate which undergoes dioxygenase forming homogenistic acid forming four methylyl acetoacetate four fumaryl acetoacetate and which splits up to form fumaric acid and acetoacetate now see one very important point i am going to bring out is you can see fumaric acid pca acetoacetate keto group so this acetoacetate can be converted into acetyl coa also that is why in the starting i told you phenyl alanine is glucogenic as it is giving fumaric acid and it is ketogenic in action and it is a essential amino acid so this is first segment in which we are discussing the catabolism of phenyl alanine now since the diagram is already drawn here i will again bring in one more important thing is what are the inborn errors of metabolism associated by the deficiency of certain enzymes it will be easier to explain and it will be very easier for you people to memorize also now first of all we are going to take phenyl alanine hydroxylase deficiency of this leads to phenyl ketonuria deficiency of 
this leads to tyrosinemia type 2 deficiency of this leads to neonatal tyrosinemia deficiency of this leads to alkaptonuria and last but not the least deficiency of this hydrolase enzyme leads to tyrosinemia type 1 so these are the major inborn error of metabolism associated with the catabolism of phenyl error and it's very easy to remember these also. Deficiency of first enzyme, phenylalanine hydroxylase, leads to phenylketonuria. Deficiency of transaminase, tyrosine transaminase or hepatic transaminase, leads to tyrosinemia type 2. Deficiency of parahydroxyphenylpyruvate dioxygenase leads to neonatal tyrosinemia. Homogenistic acid oxidase, alkaptonuria. Hydrolase tyrosinemia type 2. And one more thing I am going to tell you here is C. Pick this first reaction. When phenylalanine is being converted into tyrosine, the enzyme here is phenylalanine hydroxylase. Deficiency of this enzyme will lead to phenylketonuria type 1. And deficiency of here dihydroterin reductase will lead to phenylketonuria. So, this is how we study the catabolism of phenylalanine. Now, just now I told you, again we have to study into two different fragments. First part which I discussed here was just the catabolism. As you can see, it is forming this. Then what are the specialized products which are synthesized by phenylalanine? Because it is an essential amino acid. What are essential amino acids? Essential amino acids are defined as those amino acids which cannot be synthesized in our body and they have to be provided from outside diet. Now, next we are going to study what are the important products which are synthesized by phenylalanine. I hope the concept of glucogenic and ketogenic is clear to all of you. Now see, the most important thing about this is this phenylalanine by again one step reaction is converted into tyrosine. So this tyrosine is considered to be the first specialized product which is synthesized by phenylalanine in the presence of enzyme phenylalanine hydroxylase. Now what is the basic important product synthesized by tyrosine? This tyrosine is required for the synthesis of T3 and T4, triiodothyronine and tetraiodothyronine. Tyrosine is required for the synthesis of melanin. Tyrosine is required for the synthesis of catecholamines in our body. Very, very important. Catecholamines, which are three, dopamine. norepinephrine and epinephrine. This is how tyrosine is forming different specialized products. One more important thing, this tyrosine undergoes decarboxylation to form tyramine. Very important question. Tyrosine forms four important products. T3, T4, melanin which is giving uh, the color to the skin. Tyramine which helps in alleviating the BPB also. And different catecholamines which are dopamine, norepinephrine and epinephrine. Now, now we are going to discuss how this tyrosine
tyrosine is converted to form catecholamines. One by one we are going to take each biosynthesis. Now what happens is this tyrosine undergoes one more hydroxylation forming DOPA. As the name suggests, dihydroxyphenylalanine. Our enzyme is tyrosine hydroxylase. So once this dopa is produced, this dopa undergoes decarboxylation, forming dopamine. Decarboxylation always requires PLP as the coenzyme. This dopamine will then, in the presence of vitamin C, will form norepinephrine. First catecholamine which is synthesized, norepinephrine. This norepinephrine will then be converted into epinephrine by a very very important reaction. If you see the structures of norepinephrine and epinephrine, there is only a difference of the methyl group. And the methyl donor here is S-adenosyl methionine. This S-adenosyl methionine will donate its methyl group to norepinephrine to form epinephrine and it will be converted into S-adenosyl homocysteine. And here the name of the enzyme is phenyl ethanol amine N-methyl transferase. Again a very important thing. So this is how 1, 2, 3, the three catecholamines are synthesized by a body and how tyrosine is being converted into these. And all of us know norepinephrine and epinephrine play a very, very important role in metabolism. Whether this metabolism is of carbohydrates or whether it is of fats, they are also known as stress hormones also as they are released in stress or they are known as fire fright hormones so this is how tyrosine is converted into this now what are the inborn errors of metabolism related to this only one is there decreased synthesis of dopamine remember decreased synthesis of dopamine leads to parkinson's disease mostly found in the adults so this is how this is converted now another one very important reaction is this clear to all of you second is this tyrosine just now i told you that this tyrosine can be converted into melanin also so that is what exactly happens this tyrosine undergoes hydroxylation in the presence of enzyme tyrosinase to form melanin. Deficiency of tyrosinase leads to albinism. Right. So this is how we study the metabolism of individual amino acids and best is you should know what are the inborn errors of metabolism associated with this. Once we finish up with the metabolism of all the individual amino acids, then I am going to take these disorders also in detail. So this is all for now. Today we discuss the metabolism of phenylalanine which forms tyrosine. Phenylalanine is an essential amino acid, glucogenic as well as ketogenic. Thank you.